Okay, so Newton's first law explained what happens to an object when no forces are acting on it, or when the summation of the forces are zero that act on the body. Um, it either remained at rest or it remained at some constant velocity, and constant velocity is can be rest, right? Rest is a constant velocity of zero. Um, Newton's second law will tell us what happens when one or more forces act on it. So, um, what was observed, even by uh, Galileo and Newton, um, was that there's a relationship between the force acting on something and its acceleration. And the acceleration ends up being directly proportional to the forces and inversely proportional to the mass. Uh, we typically see this as the summation of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So note, the force is a vector. Mass is a scalar quantity. And acceleration is a vector. So let's look at what this looks like real quick as an example. Um, let's say we have some mass. And it has... Let's say it has a force like this acting on it. Well, let's do, let's say it has a force like this acting on it. All right, well, that is going to cause the mass. If this is some angle theta. Let's go ahead and make another reference point. It is going to cause the mass time to have an acceleration and the scalar mass times that acceleration are going to be exactly the same length as the external force applied and in the same exact direction so we we must have the vector portion on here um, what we can see with this relationship right here too is that uh, the bigger the force we apply, the bigger the acceleration. And if we applied maybe that same force to different size masses, that the smaller, the lighter, the less massive object is going to accelerate more. The force is more effective on a less massive object. Okay, um, now since this has to be broken into vectors, what we're going to have to do is actually break it into components. So if we have some force, let's do two components on a graph real quick. Let's say we have some force like this. All right, um, it could have, it does have some x component and some y component. some angle theta measured from the x-axis. And this force is going to cause some mass to accelerate, and the mass times the acceleration is going to be exactly that long in the same direction. But we need to break everything into components. We cannot add a vector to vector directly, if you remember. We have to break into components first. So the force in the y direction would be, let's do x first, would be f cosine theta in the y direction f sine theta. And that's because this is a right triangle. Um, if there is a z direction, we would have to deal with it also. But what, what we got to do um, is this is going to cause the mass to have a acceleration vector in that same exact direction multiplied by the mass. So we have to break up the mass times the acceleration in the x and the mass times the acceleration in the y. And actually we're just going to break up the, the y, x and y components of the acceleration. So what we're going to get is we're going to take the summation of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. This is its vector form. And we will say the 
forces, the summation of the forces in the x direction. Note there's no vector sign on this. They'll be equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Also no vector sign. We'll say the sum of the forces, that's bad, the sum of the forces in the y direction is going to equal the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. And the summation of the forces in the z will be equal to the mass times the acceleration of the z. And we could have different coordinate system also, but um, we're going to be dealing pretty much with Cartesian in here. Um, so, if this object accelerated a certain amount in the x direction, that is due to the, the component of the force in the x direction. If something is accelerating in the y direction a certain amount, that's due to only the y component. So, um, this is kind of like the... Um, trying to think of a, a scenario. So, if I had maybe a wheelbarrow, not a wheelbarrow, some sort of wagon, it has some mass to it. If I pulled with some force, it's going to have an X component and it's going to have a Y component. We'll see that unless this Y component is bigger than the mass times the gravity, it's not going to lift off the ground. It'll stay on the ground. And the only motion we'll get is in that X direction. So it'll accelerate in the X direction due to the magnitude of the force in the x direction only. So we have to be able to know when to say, okay, there is no acceleration in the y direction. And I'll teach you all that stuff. I'll work plenty of problems for the next video set. Um, it's important to note that we deal with external forces only. And this is not an easy topic. I have one really good example though, and you're going to have to think about this in your head a little bit. We don't deal with internal forces. So internal forces, cross a line through it. Um, what's an internal force? Um, well, first of all, they add to zero. So we can say force internal add to zero. So right away, we don't have to deal with them. They're not going to cause an acceleration. But what's a good example? Um, this is actually a problem on my qualifying exam for my master's. We have someone hanging or holding themselves up on a platform. There's a pulley right here. And the person is standing on the platform with some mass. The platform is massless. All we have to worry about is the mass of the person himself and they're applying a force. And it says what what are the force how much force does the person have to apply to stay exactly where he is, to not fall down and to not go up. Um when you think about this, your brain might get wrapped around, that your knees start buckling, your feet are pushing down on this. At the same time, you're pulling up, so you might think that some of this force actually gets distributed into your body. Well, it does, but um, we don't consider that. Uh, we don't need to. All we need to worry about is external forces. In this case, the only external force acting on this mass, actually, is if we draw a box around this thing, and I'll teach you about systems and how to make problems like this easier. And knowing that, another trick I'll teach you in the future, um, that the tension in a set of pulleys is the same anywhere. It doesn't matter. If it's one string, the tension is going to be the same. So the tension here is equal to the tension here, is equal to the tension here. These could be masses hanging down. This could be hanging from the ceiling. 
Um, pulley problems are fun. If you take dynamics with me, we'll do lots of pulley problems. But basically, if we draw a box around this whole thing, this tension right here that is holding up this whole entire mass, which is him, the person pulling, they have to be equal for it to um, not accelerate in any direction. And that's going to bring me to my first special case. It's called static equilibrium. If you're in engineering, we'll devote an entire class to statics. It is when the summation of the forces is equal to zero. It's also when the summation of the moments or the torques is equal to zero, but we're not here yet. Um, basically, if you had a mass, like maybe a street sign or something, and it's held up by some cables, we can know this angle and maybe this angle right here. These are literally tensions holding the object up. They have X and Y components. And when we add the X and Y components, we can say this is some F1 in the X direction, this is some F1 in the y direction, this is some f2 in the y direction, this is some f1, f2 in the x direction. We would have to break it into components, and we would say the summation of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero, and the summation of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero. Mass times acceleration does not exist. It doesn't accelerate because it's in static equilibrium. Then we'd literally add these forces together. In the x direction, I'd say, well, this is going to, the first one is going to the right, so I'll call it positive. The second one is going to the left, so we'll call it negative. And what we're doing, by the way, is a free body diagram. I'll do a whole video on these and lots of practice for this. Um, all that has to equal zero. And for the y direction, we have F1 in the y direction, it's positive, and so is F2 in the y direction. The thing we're missing that we'll learn about, and I haven't taught you yet, is the gravitational force mg. So we'd have a negative mg going down. Um, I'm just trying to slowly ease you in to each next topic, because uh, this is definitely the hardest chapter that we're going through. Um, but so far we have two laws, Newton's first law and now Newton's second law. Uh, Newton's second law, we have to break into vectors. Uh, a force causes a mass to accelerate. Um, the acceleration in the x direction is caused by the, the force in the x direction. The acceleration in the y direction is caused by the force in the y direction. Um, Looking real quick, let me just a second. Um, I'm going to introduce some, the chapter calls it some particular forces. This is 5-2. Five, five um, this just might help you with your homework, get started. Uh, one, we have a gravitational force, so we're going to say it's equal to mg. If we have some mass, if I wanted to draw a free body diagram on it, which we will do for every problem, um, we're going to have some mass times the acceleration due to gravity pointed down. Um, this is the one field force that we're going to work with, and we will call it the weight. So you might see W. I like calling it F sub G. Um, either one. Uh, either one works. And in this case, the weight would act at a magnitude of mass times gravity in the negative J direction. So we can put a vector to it. Um, 
What else? We have a normal force. Um, something you probably don't think about, but the Earth. This is the Earth. And this is you, or any object. This object has mass. I'm going to now represent you with a block M. It has some mass, and that means it has some weight equal to mg going down. Well, to counteract that, to keep it from moving or keep it in static equilibrium, we have to have what's called some normal force. That is the force of the table or the ground holding the object in place. Um, on a flat surface, only on a flat surface, does the normal force equal mass times gravity. And we get that from saying the summation of the forces in the y direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration, Newton's second law. We say if it's not moving up and down, then the acceleration is zero. And then I list my forces. The normal force is pointed up, mass times gravity is pointed down, and that all equals zero. So I get a normal force equal to mass times gravity. Now that's not always the case. We will have inclined planes. So we could have some mass or block maybe. And um, we need to be able to break up its components into its weight down the plane and its weight perpendicular to the plane, or I guess that direction. And I'll show you how to do that. But just know for now that only for flat surfaces or maybe some other special case where the friction equal the, yeah, just know for flat surfaces only that the normal force will equal mg. If we are on an inclined plane, that's not going to be the case. We would break this vector up. We would say mg points like this down. Then we have a right triangle right here where this component is mg cosine theta because this becomes our angle theta. I'm sorry. Um, this becomes our angle theta. And this is mg sine theta. So this is very commonly uh, gotten backwards by students. So just always, you can always go back to Sakatoa though. This is your right angle. This is if this is the angle of the plane, then this is your angle for this triangle on our force diagram. And Um, what we see is that if there's a normal force holding this up, we can sum the forces in what's called the perpendicular and parallel directions, or some will say this is x prime and some y prime. I like parallel and perpendicular. You can do whatever you want. If I sum the forces in the perpendicular direction, it equals mass times the acceleration of the perpendicular. Uh, it doesn't come off the surface or go down off the surface anywhere, so there's no acceleration. In that direction, it's in static equilibrium. So we can say that we just have a normal force pointed up, and that one right there, mg cosine theta, pointed down. And that equals zero, and we find out the normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. So there's your case right there that the, the normal force does not always just equal its weight. In this case, it did equal its weight because it was on a flat surface. On this, we had an angle theta. Um, we would also use this component of the weight right here, the mg sine theta. Uh, if there was no friction, no other forces acting in this direction, we would say the summation of the forces in the parallel to the plane direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the parallel direction. And we only have that one force. 
it's going to the left, so I'm going to call it a minus mg sine theta. Uh, we can call this positive if we want and keep it clean. And that's going to equal the mass times the acceleration down the plane. So we could solve for the acceleration right there. It would be constant as long as the angle doesn't change. And look, it's not a function of mass unless we have friction. And then I'll teach you about friction. We haven't talked about that yet. Um, one last force. Uh, I already talked about it, but it's tension. And I think you can get quite a bit of your homework done with this. Um, tension is literally pulling down on a string, a, a something that does not have mass. Um, it's you can only apply attention to it, right? I can't push a string up against the ceiling. It would just buckle like this, but I can pull it really tight. Um, so tensions only work in one direction. There, one of my professors used to say, you can't push on a rope. And in most of these problems, all, all these problems, we're going to have a, a rope that is massless, a rope that doesn't have any friction or any friction in the pulleys as it passes through the pulleys. Um, and let's do a real quick example of tension. If I had some mass hanging from the ceiling by a string, we could represent this on a free body diagram as a tension pointed up and a mass times gravity pointed down. If this is not moving, this is a Newton's second law static equilibrium case again, where the acceleration is equal to zero. So I just get the tension pointed up minus mass times gravity pointed down is equal to zero. And we find out that the tension has to be equal to the mass times the gravity. And so that, that's really similar to the, the normal force, right? All right, I'll do some, a bunch of example problems in the next, as well as going over Newton's third law.